Hello friends, in our previous session on the JAT test, we discussed about the experimental setup and also the procedure that we adopt in order to find out the optimum dosage of the coagulant that we use it for purification of the water. So in this session, let us discuss the JAT test experiment with the calculation. So directly move on to the procedure that we adopt. So actually the JAR test experiment first of all involves the JAR test apparatus as it is shown in the diagrammatic form here. It involves the apparatus with the six rotating paddles and a setup to rotate, control the rotation in terms of the RPM and also there is a arrangement for keeping out the six jars. So some other setups comes with uh, less number of the jars also for uh, in uh, finding out the optimum dosage you are getting out with the six jars it will be a better option so when we take out these six jars first of all we will be filling out each of these jars with one liter of the water sample so the water sample what we are taking for that we should know its turbidity so that is very important so what turbidity we are keeping out that we call it as the initial turbidity initial turbidity of the water so initial turbidity of the water which we are taking let us call it as a okay that is very important and then uh, then after uh, keeping out the jars in the position and filling out it with the one liter of the water attach the sample jars to the steering device by lifting these paddles in the right upward direction and then we will be adding the coagulant solution in progressive volumes let us say in each of the jars in the first jar we will be taking out 0.25 ml in the second jar 0.5 ml and then 0.75 ml and then we will be taking 1 ml 1.25 ml and lastly we will be taking 1.5 ml in each of these six jars we will be adding the coagulant dosage after that we will be going for the flocculation flocculate the samples rapidly for about one minute with mechanically operated paddles at around 60 to 80 rpm followed by gentle steering for about 30 rpm for 15 minutes 30 rpm for 15 minutes and then we will be removing these jars from the steering device after steering is complete after steering is complete we will be taking out them from the position and let the samples or the jars stand for at least 30 minutes for settling of the clocks we will be giving out the settling time around 30 minutes okay settling of 30 minutes is allowed and uh, this is very important because settling is directly proportional with the time okay so as the time you are giving more the settling will be more and then after keeping out these samples select the minimum dosage giving out the best flock formation and the settling characters okay so this is uh, how we are going to calculate this is based on the observation procedure and uh, let us go for the calculation and also how we are noting down the calculations so quantity of the water filled in each of the jar is 1000 ml the quantity what we are taking so and the up the and for the alum solution alum solution we will be taking out 14.28 grams of alum in 1 liter of distilled water so this is for preparation of the alum solution okay so you may ask a question that why we are taking only 14.28 grams of alum in 1 liter of distilled water this is not a compulsory quantity so in some of the other videos you may find and in other videos as well in other textbooks you may find the different quantity of the alum that is added into the distilled water for the preparation of the solution so the main thing here is we should know how much of the alum is coming in 1 ml of the distilled water that is very important if you are preparing in this manner then the the strength then we will be getting the strength of alum will be 14.28 grams per liter or else we can also say it as 
14.28 mg per ml. First of all, this is important. You should know how much of alum is present in 1 ml of the distilled water. So, if you know this strength, then it is easy for you to understand how much you are adding the alum into the water. Once we know this, it is easy for us to calculate the optimum dosage. So, different concentration and uh, different strength of the alum is also used. That is not wrong. So, some sometimes they will be getting out the 1 mg per 1 ml like that also. This is one standard uh, value that is given in the textbook. The textbook what which we are referring is the SK Garg textbook for the water supply. By referring this textbook, we are explaining this experiment and understanding this experiment. This is specifically referred for the engineering students experiments. After understanding how we are calculating the strength of the alum, now let us understand how we are calculating the optimum dosage. See, for calculation of the optimum dosage, in this experimental setup, we are finding out based on the visual understanding of the flocculation. This is which dosage is giving you the best flock. Just by the visual understanding, which is the best flock or the maximum flock formation that we are selecting as an optimum dosage in mg per ml, we have to get it. So, is equal to the strength of the alum is 14.28 mg per ml into which of the dosage in these values is giving you the best flock formation that we are going to select. So, that let us call it as x, x ml per liter of water. See, let us select it as x ml per liter of the water. Some dosage, it may be like 0.75 ml is giving you the best flock formation that we selected as a optimum dosage. So, that we are calling, instead of taking a value, that we are calling it as a x ml per liter of the water. Let us put it around here, x ml okay, per liter of water. So, here ml ml gets cancelled. The answer will be 14.28 into x. So, it will be coming in mg per liter of water. Okay. So, this will be the answer we will be getting that is 14.28 into x mg per liter of the water. So, which value is coming here that will be considered as the optimum dosage in terms of the milligrams per liter of the water. So, here in this experiment there is a judgment of the best optimum dosage based on the flock formation just by seeing it uh, physically. So, you may get a doubt in other terms we do the experiment in the laboratory scale for the engineering students wherein we consider the initial turbidity of the water as I said initial turbidity of the water was A and after sufficient time of 30 minutes as we told we will be taking out the jars outside for the rest we will be taking out in these water after resting of 30 minutes the surface around 10 ml of the water is taken out and this will be uh, this will be checked for the final turbidity once we know the initial turbidity initial turbidity is same for all the jars but final turbidity will be different after 30 minutes of rest for each of the jars we will be checking out final turbidity for each of the jar and which is and we will be checking out initial turbidity minus final turbidity which is giving you the best value for the removal see for all these dosage there will be a removal of the uh, turbidity but the thing is as you know if we are adding more of the dosage removal is more but we don't want to go out of the economy so we simply don't want to add more of the alum into the water. So, any chemical in excess in the water is not desirable. So, we want to find out the optimum dosage. That is, with the minimum amount of the chemical, we want to get the maximum benefit. So, that is why we conduct the experiment and find out the optimum dosage. So, once we know the initial turbidity and we will be checking out the final turbidity in the turbidity meter. So, we use the turbidity meter and we will be getting the values of turbidity in terms of NTU. Once we know, it may be like initial turbidity will be A NTU and final turbidity will be B NTU. So, which is giving you the maximum removal. Okay, maximum removal. So, that we consider it as a... Uh, optimum dosage of the coagulant. So, we may get a doubt that 
so after 30 minutes of time even for the 0.25 ml or minimum values of the dosage also use the removal that is a key point in this uh, because settling will be more as we give out more of the time so but time is also an important constraint in treatment of the water so in case of the real plant applications we will be treating out the waters for on a day basis or a week basis like that so time is a restriction there so every day we can't give out more of the time for the settling so time particular time will be given for settling of the particles so and also in case of the real plant application so the water that is entering into the plant will be having different initial turbidities every day so simply we can't fix out a simple value in order to put down the coagulant every day so initial turbidity will be different for example in case of the rainy season turbidity water turbidity of the water will be more so in case of that we have to check it every day basis and, and also understand what is the turbidity and how much amount of the coagulant has to be added so keeping out this thing and uh, jar test conduction of the Conducting the jar test every day in case of the real plant application is quite difficult. In some of the journals and the researches have been made on this and uh, some of the jar test apparatus that is made for the online calculations and turbidity calculations will be made automatically and uh, such arrangements are also available that is jar test fitted with the turbidity calculation arrangements. But the thing is settling is related with the time. In case of the in case applic applying it in the real plant, we should be careful because initial turbidity of the water will be varying. It is not like once we conduct the jar test experiment and we fix out some quantity of the coagulant and we simply add it every day. So for this, in case of the real plant application, we should be careful in order to decide the coagulant. We can't simply add more of the coagulant. Even if we add more of the coagulant, it, it can't remove the turbidity in the water but it is not desirable to add more of the coagulant into the water we have to go with the optimum dosage just we just like we decide the optimum dosage of the bleaching powder or the chlorine that we add into the water just like that we have to decide optimum dosage of the coagulant also in order to apply it into the real plant application so this is about the jar test experiment with the calculation that we use it for the engineering labs in the environmental engineering labs for the experimental sessions. Thank you.